Good luck. <laughs> you guys go, it's rolling. <laughs> Hope she's okay. Well, she seemed a bit curt. <laughs> she got divorced, but she's getting a check. <laughs> so. Oh, God, is that a bug in my back? Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, God, there are a ton of bugs here. Oh, it wasn't. It was just a piece of paper. Oh, there you okay. go. False alarm. <laughs> <Good to hear. laughs> yeah, yesterday uh. I was um, I was standing. I was practicing my violin, and I felt something in my toe, and I was like, oh, well, that's weird. It's like a, a piece of, like, lint or something. And I looked down, and it's a roach on my foot. And, oh, oh my God, it was so terrifying. <laughs> oh, no. Came to listen to your beautiful right. music. Hmm? <laughs> it came to listen to your beautiful music, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's beautiful, but... Uh, the music might be beautiful. The roach, I'm sure it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. Yeah. The, the scary thing about roaches is, is there's not normally just one. Right. Where there's one, there's many. You find one, and then you find, like, two more. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how old are you all? So. Uh, you can go, I guess, and answer that. I mean, am, am I older than all you? Does anyone else have kids? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that doesn't really mean much. How old are you, Taylor? 29. 29. I'm 22. Okay. Um, yeah. So then... When you went to school, did people get lice? Uh, not not since grade school, no. <laughs> but it but it wasn't. A, I don't remember it being a huge problem when I was a kid. They checked for it a lot, but there wasn't really much lice actually happening. Mhm. Mm and and but now, it's a lot more common. I've got a kid in school. And it's just one of those things where there's one, there's normally more. If one kid at school has lice, it's fucking shut down. Right. <laughs> there's like there's like this super lice. I saw an ad. I was in New York City. There's an ad that there's super lice. They're calling them. Just frightening. That well, could the, be it. He, apparently, Nix is the medicine for it. Has been the same chemical for in the same concentration for like sixty years. Mm. So, it's about time to change something up. Yeah. They call them super, but it's just it just means that the same. Well, if they're using the same medicine for sixty years, the bugs are gonna be. They got a good haul out of it. Right. They're immune to it by now. Yeah. Same thing with the whole uh, the the bed bug thing. That's that's scary too. I have not experienced that personally, but mm, I know a few people who did in Cincinnati. Hmm. And that just sounds. Awful. Oh, definitely. <laughs> the, fir the first time I had a, I, I had a lice scare. This is how ungracefully I handled it. Because I've never had lice, and it's it's just it, it's kind of like I don't know. It gives me the emotional reaction of like herpes and bugs or something. <laughs> it's it's gut wrenchingly awful sounding. I, the first time that I, I thought that there was lice in our house, I just got I got shit faced drunk. <laughs> I got shit and that, that was it. And, and Katie ended up having cleaning the whole house because I just was I, I checked out. <laughs> it's too much for you. Couldn't deal with that. But I woke up the next morning and everything had been clean, you know, just, just like you're supposed to, and, and crisis averted. So uh, w I'll, ca I'll count that as a win. <laughs> the moral of the story: get get shit face drunk. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I could do it. <laughs> I I'd probably do the same thing, to be honest. Yeah, I was I was still a little bit surprised at how gracelessly I handled that. <laughs> I'm normally really good in intense situations, but little little hair bugs. That's the one that fucking did me in. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, I, I would. Uh, I, I honestly, I think I would do the same thing. Because what else can you do? Clean it, but no, nah, I'm too squeamish for that. Well, it started. I mean, that's how it started out. Is I, I'm, was drinking vodka while cleaning things. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> One thing led to the next. Then I was just well, no, two things led to just drinking vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but no lice, so that's good. But yeah, so if if you're having kids in the near future, you've got that to look forward to because that's a new reality. Um, not I'm not sure I'm gonna have kids. Neither was I. Turns out you don't always get to choose when you're gonna have. Oh, kids. <laughs> most certainly. <laughs> <laughs> you're too busy having fun, and then the next thing you know. Just trying to have sex, and then <laughs> <laughs> people, <laughs> little people, which is the greatest mistake I ever made. Right, because it's never awful. You got you love them. They're your kids. I don't, I don't have. I'm. I don't like things that need maintenance. Just in general, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't want to have to. It's not recreational for me. I don't enjoy things that give me responsibilities, typically. I was kind of scared that I wouldn't like being a dad. Mm. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> that's that's good. Pleasantly is good. Mm-hmm. Can I hear you? Longer, I'm going to walk inside and start doing that shit where I show you you're sleeping. <laughs> Be that dad. Responsibility, yeah, that's, that's, I fear responsibility. But it kind of sucks the soul out of most things. Right. I had someone tell me that uh, I was their their best friend, which some people were just like, yeah, that's fine. But I was like, there's a responsibility that comes. Yeah, and it always kind of comes out of, out of left field, that statement, I feel hmm. like. I've been told being, that. And it's never by it's it is <laughs> it's always been by someone who like you're like kind of thinking well, yeah we're good friends <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that it was like that right you know, are you friends better than me <laughs> like I'm I'm it like you picked me out of everyone that's 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 not good. <laughs> It's it's one of the, yeah I, I mean I can't equate it to having children but it's kind of like a pleasant surprise it's like okay thanks I'm a favorite that's good I guess but now I got to deal with uh well I, I guess I don't I'm a guy too so I've right. never had that conversation with anyone either way anyway at all sober <laughs> it's always under the influence but um. I love you, man. That's totally. <laughs> that, that's a drunk guy conversation. That's a drunk guy conversation. Oh my goodness. I know you know what I'm talking about. Hmm. I I, I would prefer it to be a drunk conversation. I'd prefer because... just have a conversation, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes if you and your buddies are drunk, and then one of them starts going down that thing, you kind of just do them the courtesy. Hey, I guess it's probably kind of like the guy version of holding his hair back while he pukes or something. Okay. Like, all right, I know you're really drunk. I'm, I'm drunk too. We'll get, we'll get that out of you, and you'll feel better. <laughs> We'll both pretend that we don't remember it in the morning. It's probably more natural that way, I guess. Well, I'm an I'm an I'm an intuitive thinker and a guy, so it's very In natural. intuitive thinker. What is that? Because, like I said, I'm new to this whole thing. So, what what is the really big difference? 
intuitive thinkers, um, the NT combination is uh, kind of emotionally distant. Mm. We don't place a lot of value on how people feel about things. Oh, okay. You're, you're INTP? ENTP. ENTP. Okay. And and so is Eric. So we're the same type, but in kind of there's a, there's a, a pretty wide variance, I guess, in our function strengths. Hmm. How do you see that? I'm more of a I I he values feeling extroverted feeling more than I do, and I value uh, internal thinking more than he does. I'm I'm talking to you and working on a on a little renewal right now at the same time. <laughs> I couldn't get that last part. I'm sorry. I'm working on financial spreadsheets and talking to you at the same time. So oh, okay. This, this, <laughs> I'm putting I'm compiling balance sheets for my for my job. So this is a perfect uh, introverted thinking activity coming out of an extrovert. Oh, okay. But basically it manifests as he's nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the whole feeling thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, feeling feeling is nice. We're the same type, and we still neither of us place a greater emphasis on feeling than on, you know, kind of rightness. Um, but relatively, he's more concerned with the communal contentment than I am. Okay. Just as an example, so it's more of a feeling thing that I'm kind of like, oh, he's been gone a long time, I hope they're doing okay. Just the fact that you said, I hope she's okay at all. Oh, really? Is, is, okay. is an extroverted feeling, because I heard I heard the same tone of voice, and I, I became an, uh, an extroverted intuitive, which is my lead function. I immediately went, I wonder what the fuck's going on there. <laughs> so you're more interested in the in the situation, I guess. I'm curious about what could possibly be happening. I don't necessarily want to, you know, it's not sadistic. I don't want to bask in her pain. Uh, right. And I don't, it's not self-promoting. Uh, I'm not going to try to leverage it. I just really want to know. <laughs> right. I don't knock you for it. If you want to know, you want to know. Mm-hmm. I, I still want to know. I mean, that's still but kind of <laughs> bugging me how she can come pick up a check and be cranky at the same time. I don't know. I'm divorced. I'm a divorced ENTP, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm a single dad, too. I've got sole custody of my daughter, and I'm owed child support, and I've never gotten a check. I'm thinking it would be fucking wonderful to get a check. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> my, my brother, he's going through that, so. Yeah, it's... You know, marriage is just and marriage is not a real thing anymore. Like it probably was when. I mean, my parents are still married. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Marriage was a strong thing. I guess it was like the emphasis on just trying to work things out back then. To now, divorce is so simple. I guess people are just like it's a way out. Well, it's not always even simple though. Mine was because. I mean, the circumstances were very black and white. Um, mm -hmm. But divorce is messy, especially when there's custody, especially when there's a lot of assets, when you've been married a lot. I was only married for a year. Oh. <laughs> I'd test her of that car. <laughs> if you have no fault, divorce isn't a thing anymore. And then, uh, I mean, Christianity's on the down low. Like, they're the rebel group now. And you're not uh, supposed to get divorced like, that, when you're a Christian. That's that is true. Uh, the kind of conservative Christian values are are frowned upon pretty much now. Right. It's Which, it's the enemy. Right. And I think I think that that's a very bad thing. It shouldn't be the enemy. Christians might be wrong about a lot of things. No offense, but the the value system is I think 
Well, it's once given us Western culture for great. Yeah. The only thing I, I guess religion, the why, the reason why is is frowned upon is because of all the the negatives. I guess people are are seeing, but it's so complicated. I mean, well, people use just like anything. People will use religion. I mean, it, but people have used religion historically in a very aggressive fashion a lot. So people will be. Some people are justified in saying, you know, this is bad, this is bad, stop doing that. But then the other side of that is the same can be said for people who are standing up for the weak. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of gay rights groups are very opposed to the conservative moral values. Too right. much so, aggressively so, to where, to where I think that they, you know, took something which was maybe originally good, standing up for someone who's being oppressed, and have become the oppressor. It's just the nature of how tides of people move through their emotional fervor. I, th I think because yeah. I consider myself Christian. Well, I am. I, I, you know, the thing is, is just I can see from an outside perspective is, is how do you have something promote love and then have, con you know, people who, who judge and condemn meanwhile... They're, they're promoting love, so it, it just seems, I guess my thing is, if, if you have a problem with a certain person's lifestyle, just, you know, prey on it rather than, rather than try to ostracize, ostracize them. Oh, well, I, you can go, you can go ahead, Taylor, I'll, I'll talk. <laughs> Alright, I'll just clear, I'm, I'm pretty contently agnostic, um, but, or, read the freaking Bible for the answer, because church culture is so far removed from Jesus' teachings. Agreed. And Christians are, are a lot more stupid. Like a lot of the a lot of the uh, claims are warranted. You know, like they're ignorant and they don't look at the truth. They don't want to look at. Um, you know, they don't even want to deal with atheist arguments or anything like that. And that's just not what you're supposed to do. Also, with the whole tolerance thing, like you know, we shouldn't judge people or condemn people or whatever. There's a difference between the biblical meaning of tolerance and then the tolerance that uh, this New Age relativist culture defines tolerance. It's completely different. It's, yeah. it's tolerance nowadays is you don't have the right to hurt my feelings. Jesus, Jesus went up to a lady at a well and called her a whore, basically. Like, he just assumed that she was a whore because she was at this well. Whore. Like, he was, there's... He was whoring. <laughs> right, but if I did that nowadays, if I did that, I would be condemned for that. I would, I would be like, I would be. Right. You know, why are you judging this person? Why are you, are you assuming that she's doing? Off, why are you doing that? Jerk you off, and you say that she's a whore. You haven't insulted her. You just stated a fact. Um, right. But yeah, tolerance used to mean don't kill them, not give them an extra bathroom in case you ever run across a lady man who needs to go potty. Right. There's, there's a difference between um, saying that homosexuality is wrong, which it is, versus, like, not loving the person. Like, they're, they're not homosexuality, you know? Like, they're not, um, they're partaking in a, in a bad act, but they're, they themselves as a person are good people, and you should love them. That does, doesn't mean that you don't speak so you out. Think, you, think that, that, you think that's a blanket statement that people are good? You think that you can you can you can say gay people are good people who are doing a bad thing, and that that is a blanket truth. Right. They have, good by good. I mean, they have value. Like they're they're called good by God in the eyes of God. They are good. So they are good. Yeah. Do you think there's bad people? No, I think there's people that do bad things. Um, I mean, but they're, everyone everyone's life is worth the same. I would very strongly disagree with that. How so? Are you, you think there's just evil people out there? Yeah, I do. And I think that there are people who do a whole lot of good for the world, and I think that there are people who whose net impact on, on others around them is bad. Well, it's interesting because when you keep on sinning or you keep on doing something bad, you find it more and more excuses to keep on doing that thing, and it just becomes so accustomed to your nature uh, that you just keep on doing that thing, and you don't think 
is bad at all. Like your heart, you know, turns uh, to doing bad things and justifying it. Um, so you don't even like look at it anymore. Right, but it's so how, whatever that person is doing internally to get there. What I'm saying is, there are people whose interactions with others are almost always negative and abusive. Their interaction with the world is negative. They create. They have a bad impact on those around them. Universally, sure. and there are people who universally make everyone more miserable. But would you say that makes them bad themselves? I would say that they then, uh, first of all, I would absolutely say that their life has less value than someone who's out there positively impacting people. If you have a negative impact around you, you are less valuable than someone who has no impact. Well, there's differences in between how we should dish out punishment. Like, I would say, you know, you should punish those people. Um, but well, that doesn't mean that life is worth I'm, I'm just I'm just figuring out how to assign value. Yeah, there's a difference between those those things. Right. And I think that from a value assignment, yeah, there's a huge... I mean, I think that if, if you could measure net impact, I think that you could absolutely stack everyone's work, just <laughs> writing a list from most important to least important. Okay. That's hard. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't do that. But, I mean, I... I, I, I can... I yeah. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I, I would say that those people need to be punished and their ways need to be corrected. But I wouldn't now, say that they're bad. Now, punishment is a whole different thing. Because then, what are you? What is the objective? Are you, are you trying to correct their behavior and reform them? Are you trying to get revenge for their behavior, or are you trying to prevent people from doing bad things by having punishment as a threat? I would say prevent. It, it depends on what the crime is or what the wrong that they're doing is. It, it's interesting because, you know, the first rehabilitation prisons were Christian prisons. Um, you know, they, would, they would have a Bible there. That's why, you you know, they can read that. That's where it originates from. Um, that, they, that they hopefully, when they did get out, they would be corrected. Um, and then they would also have, you know, certain jobs that they could do and um, help out the community and whatnot. It, 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 but, I mean, it depends on, on, on what it is. There was a guy that was uh, locked up in, like, Ohio or something um, because he, he kept on raping women, uh, and he was, he was charged with having a mental illness. Um, so, he, you know, this lady was helping him, um, and then she took him out to the movies one time, uh, and then he ended up killing her and then raping her dead body and then throwing her in a tr trash can. Like, That's a problem. <laughs> there's a there's, song about that. Ah, oh, geez. It's 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 an it's a it's from like the seventies. It's kind of a snappy tune. <laughs> it's a snappy <laughs> tune. <laughs> the lyrics and the song are, <laughs> but has a lot. Yeah, no. I mean, I do think there's a point where your heart can be corrupted, and to the point where like there's you're just set in your ways, and you're gonna do that. Right. Can you just chalk it up to mental illness? If something's wrong with someone... No, I think then... there's too many people. I don't know why everything has to be a mental illness. I think that some people just suck. Some people, some... Are, just, some people are just vindictive or selfish. Whatever. Whatever the flaw is, I don't think you need to assign an illness to it. Right. I agree. Oh, and, then, and then determining what is normal is a whole other thing. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so how, like, you know, I have a deficiency in climbing ladders. Do I... I get a prescription for that because I can't climb ladders well. I don't think there is a normal. I don't think there should be a normal because society wouldn't function if everyone had the same skill set and the same weaknesses. Right. If you look at the, if you look at the MBTI distributions, it's actually kind of interesting that uh, intuitive thinkers, ENTPs, who want to come up with a lot of ideas and tell people what, and then have people do the shit for us, there's really not that many of us. How how much can you rely on MBTI though? I'm, not, not, I'm 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 saying what? like it's it's probably helpful, but there is a I'm probably you know I'm thinking it there could be overlapping. Like how how far can you say you are an NTP, even though rely. you might have? Hmm. Like what do you mean by rely upon it? Like I wouldn't rely upon it for my hygiene. I wouldn't rely upon it for. <laughs> 
I think what do you mean by reliable? I, th I think I know what you mean. I think it is the most accurate psychological science that I've I've observed. Okay. Um, it, it is pretty pretty astonishing. I took it. I learned about it a couple of years ago at a uh, higher education uh, college, college after college, kind of a continued education thing from through my industry, um, in a management class. And they had us take the test, and it was the it was the official one. And I didn't think a thing about it. I just answered the questions as part of the pre-assignment, and went on my way, and thought nothing about it for you know another month until I went to to the school. And then when they started going over the results and telling me about myself, and telling me like how I had waited until the last minute to pack my shit and <laughs> I, instead of choosing out outfits or something I just kind of grabbed handfuls of each category of clothes like I have some fucking underwear some fucking socks um, and if I, <laughs> I can buy flip flops when I get there right. um, Walmart. I mean just the way that this woman pulled me out and being an ENTP in financial services which is kind of Kind of an eccentric person in a dry industry. Uh, I was used for a lot of examples, so I got a lot of FaceTime of of her telling me about me and me going. That's pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. I only asked because um, I was, like I said, I'm new. I, I tried reading up on it, and I heard that psychologists don't really rely on uh, the MBTI. They kind of see it as pop. Psychology, but I don't know. I think there's a cultural bias against against free categorizing people. To some extent, uh, eugenics. I think people have a, some people have a need for reaction, and then psychology is just one of those things that you can't really prove it or disprove any of those theories most of the time, anyways. It would also threaten their position. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, the scientific community is kind of just a I mean, there's a lot of bull bullshit floating around it. There's a lot of assholes. A lot of, a lot of bullshit floating around it. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> That's <laughs> not what... <laughs> Is You're actually... a stopping spot? Or... Yeah, because I lost my train of thought. Okay. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Sorry for interrupting.